I'm going to try something that is maybe virtually impossible. But remember, this is just a primer. And what I want to uh, talk about today is Kant's ethics. So Kant has three books out. The first one is called The Critique of Pure Reason. The second one is called The Critique of Practical Reason. And the last one is called The Critique of Judgment. And I want to focus on the second one today, and that is ethical theory. Now, what Kant did is, it's actually a pretty amazing thing what he did. Think about this. Think about every possible rule or law or little maxim that you might have, and imagine if you boiled them all down and try to find the basic ground of all of them. So all of them stem from just like one thing. What an amazing project that would be. Let's say that you had different rules like, um, before I get to the rules, look at this thing. Look, empty. This is the Kant magic box. It doesn't look like a box really, it's more like a sack. So let's say we put different maxims and different rules into the Kantian magic bag. Here's one. The sooner you fall behind, the more time you have to catch up. That might be somebody's little maxim, a little rule that they use. Here's another one. Hard work pays off in the future. Laziness pays off now. We'll put that one in there. I wonder what these all have in common, because that's exactly what Kant wants to figure out. Eat less, taste more. Put that in there. You might have a little maxim that you could put in the bag yourself. If at first you don't succeed, destroy all evidence that you tried. How about this one? Failure does not, is not in falling down. Failure is in not getting up. And last, I'll just put these in here as a mix-up. The greatest man is hard on himself. A small man is hard on others. If you put them all in here for Kant, mix them all up, all the rules and regulations, he will say you end up coming out with just one basic rule. And the rule that he comes up with sounds like this. Act only on that maxim that you can at the same time will to be a universal law. That's what he calls his categorical imperative. All right. It sounds like a lot. Let's go in. Let me just break this down simply for you and then you'll get it. So the key that I want to show you is this categorical imperative. Now, Kant has different formulations of this. He's got several books out on ethics, not just the critique of practical reason. So with that in mind, I just want to sort of put this together in a very general synthesis. If you're actually a Kantian, don't be rolling your eyes at me right now. So let's put on the categorical imperative and take a look at it. And the imperative is act only on that maxim that you can at the same time will to be a universal law. Now, wait a minute, I got to get my little face in here. So hang on just a minute. Okay, I'm back. So act only on that maxim that you can at the same time will to be a universal law. So the first thing that you should notice here is act. That's usually an ethical thing. We're going to do an action. And what are you going to act on? A little rule of some sort. Remember all the little rules that we put in the magic bag? Those were all little maxims. So you have to be able to make a little rule or a little law for yourself that at the same time, you could will it to be a universal law. What's that mean, a universal law? Well, let's pretend that you had a magic wand. Now with this magic wand, you could actually change the way that nature works. So let's say, I don't want gravity to be there anymore. Boom! And you could change it with this magic wand. Imagine if you had this magic wand for ethical systems so that when you decided 
what should what the law should be it would be universalized for everybody all times all places even if people lived on mars that's the idea of the universal law so what are we doing uh guy the lights back guys uh the the light, where's my spot you know my agent went, thank you that's good so if we're willing it to be a universal law, then we're also saying that everybody should follow it. And that's what Kant is trying to do. He's saying, basically, if you're human, you've got a couple of things going for yourself. One is, you have reason. So you should never do anything against reason. The other thing you have is freedom. So how does human reason and freedom work together? Reason should never contradict itself. Consequently, if you make this maxim and you make it a universal law, it absolutely, positively has to follow reason. As a matter of fact, he will say, it's your absolute duty to do it. Actually, the, the duty thing gets a little weird for him. In his second critique, he actually writes a poem to duty. It starts like this, duty thou art sublime. Go figure, he's a philosopher. So what is your duty to do? To follow reason. Absolutely critical. And it's an imperative. Imperative means you absolutely must do it. So here it is in a nutshell for Kant. In order to act correctly, you have to use reason, never contradict reason, and he doesn't care how you feel about it. That's your duty to do it. An example of this would be, don't lie. Why? Because if you lie, and you say truth telling, but you can lie sometimes, then you're sort of contradicting the very nature and understanding of truth itself. Let me quote it for you one more time. It's the absolute nugget in Immanuel Kant. He has a little, a couple other formulations of this, but this is the key one. Act only on that maxim that you can at the same time will to be a universal law. And that, my friends, is the categorical imperative.